When making a custom iRacing car paint, we can create two files. A car paint and an optional spec map. Spec is short for specular. The specular effects are, 1, shininess or reflectivity. 2, roughness. This video will only explain the contents of the spec map. Another video in this playlist describes the other layers within the car template. Here we have the iRacing Legends Ford 34 car template open in Affinity Photo. Within this project, we have already converted the iRacing custom spec map to RGB. How to do this is covered in another video, the link is in the description. The most important concept to understand is the red and green values are not coloring the car. They are being used to control the strength of specular effects. A special point to note, a color or shade can be specified in two ways. 1. A shade of red, say 128, with an alpha value of 255 meaning fully visible. 2. Full red, a value of 255, with an alpha value of 128 meaning 50% opacity. Both methods will result in the same color. Let's make the RGB spec map visible and go through the contents. Within the spec map we have three layers. Each layer contains one color. Each layer controls one specular effect. The red layer controls the shininess or reflectivity of the car surface. This graphic is commonly used to explain the effect. It shows the metallic effect for values ranging from 0 to 1. We paint red in values from 0 to 255. If you want an effect similar to the 0.8 setting, multiply 255 by 0.8 which gives a red value of 204. Red values towards 0 mean the car surface won't be shiny or reflective. That does not mean the surface is rough, it just means light does not reflect off it. As red values increase the surface becomes more reflective. Light sources like the sun, overhead lights and car headlights all reflect off the car. As the red value increases, it will darken the color of the paint. To get the desired hue or tint, you may have to lighten the color of the paint under the metallic area. When red values are around say 160, we start getting a metallic paint finish. Significant darkening of the paint will occur. When red values are above say 220, the color white becomes chrome. Let's have a look at the red metallic layer of our Legends Ford. I will turn off the green and blue layers so we can clearly see the red content. Within the red metallic group we have two layers, parts and base. The parts are normally small areas and details of the car that need a specific specular effect. A good example is the emblem on the bonnet and boot which are normally very shiny and reflective. Looking at this parts layer, a small number of parts have a fully red spec map. Which means they are very reflective and could even be chrome depending on their base color. If we turn the metallic area off and look at the car mandatory area, we see all of these metallic parts are in the car mandatory area. This means we have no control over the color of these areas, within the paint layer. And it's likely we don't have control over the spec map in these areas, although some cars you do. These little parts are the ZIS clips securing the body panels, and the flat end of the tubes where they attach to the car. Despite not having control over these parts, this layer is useful. If we want to match the visual effects of these parts, we can copy the settings within these areas. The next red metallic layer is the base which covers the entire car. It is set to a low red value, this will give a paint gloss effect but not metallic. The normal place where you would put your custom shiny metallic effects, is within new layers between the base and parts layers. The green layer controls the roughness of the car surface. This graphic is commonly used to explain the effect. It shows the roughness effect for values ranging from 0 to 1. We paint green in values from 0 to 255. If you want effects similar to the 0 0.1 setting, multiply 255 by 0 0.1 which gives a green value of 25. There are two examples in this graphic. What roughness does to metallic surfaces? What roughness does to non-metallic surfaces? For a highly reflective surface, we would want a high red slash metallic value and a low green roughness value. Within our green roughness group we have two layers, parts and base. 
the green parts layer again only has content for the car mandatory areas. It's a green value of around 175 or 70 percent, so not smooth but not entirely rough. The green base layer has a low green value, so not as smooth as a metal surface. This small amount of roughness, 38 or 15 percent, is ideal for a natural painted surface. The normal place where you would put your custom roughness effects, is within new layers between the base and parts layers. The blue layer controls ambient occlusion. However iRacing does not use the blue channel. We leave the blue channel at its default setting of solid blue. That's the content of the spec map. The structure is not complex. But if you are new to spec maps, it is hard to understand that color controls specular effects. Let's demonstrate the specular effects. This is what our Legends Ford looks like with this simplistic custom paint. The tube bars are white. The boot has white and black areas where we will apply specular effects. Within the custom paint I have a number of areas grouped together to aid managing specular effects. Within the specular demo group there is a white slash chrome group. The frame bars, the radiator grill and the white rectangle on the boot. These parts are all white and the specular effect will make them chrome. There is a blue rectangle that you can't see because it's the same color as the car paint. If I turn off the base coat layer you can see it. We will apply a metallic effect to this rectangle. There is a black rectangle, we will apply a roughness specular effect here. Let's define our specular effects. I will copy the specular demo group within the paint area, then drag it into the green roughness group within the RGB spec map. The white slash chrome group needs to be very smooth. I'm going to set everything in this group to minimum roughness. Which means a green value of 0. Within the green layer we always use red and blue values of 0. We will give the blue slash metallic rectangle just a little roughness, a green value of 16. We will give the black slash rough rectangle maximum roughness simply to demonstrate the roughness specular effect. Apply a green value of 255. Now I will copy the specular demo group again, and drag it into the red metallic group. Within the red layer we always use green and blue values of 0. The white slash chrome areas need maximum shine, so use a red value of 255. For the blue slash metallic rectangle we will use a red value of 190. For the black slash roughness rectangle we will use a red value of 0. Now we can export the RGB spec map to the Targa file. Then we can use the car viewer to render the paint and spec map. As you can see, the frame bars have changed from white to chrome. The left rectangle on the boot is also chrome, note how smooth, shiny and reflective that surface is. The middle rectangle has a metallic finish, the color is darker, the surface is not as smooth as the chrome. The light reflections are not as clear due to the roughness. The right rectangle has a fully rough finish. And it does not reflect light at all. It helps to specify red slash metallic separately to green slash roughness. You can look at them independently and visually understand, more red means more reflection, more green means a rougher surface. Many people do put a single layer above the red layer and apply both red and green within a single color across a specific area. That's normally okay when you are defining a spec map. I want 50% shiny and 20% roughness in one single hit. But months later when you come back to revise the paint and spec map, what does dull purple mean? <laughs>